So here we'll, we'll click on the harvest loss calculator. And if you've got a um, another device you want to follow along, that uh, that'll work great. So here you land on the, the landing page for the harvest loss tool. Um, there's some instructions in the top left corner, as well as um, there's a short video. So what this short video will do is it'll help you with the actual collection of the losses. Um, it's got producers with questions and answers showing how they collect losses. And I can touch on that shortly. Um, you know, the, there's, there's plenty of good um, companies out there now who produce uh, loss trays. Um, if you're starting out and you want to just do it on your own, um, there's examples in the videos. As long as you've got a tray, um, either something you can throw under the combine or attach to a, a handle that you can flip over and catch at a, a loss at a certain point in time. Um, you know, really anything works to collect those samples. Um, so I don't want that to be a stumbling block if you're not ready to per purchase one of the professional kits. But I would definitely say that um, the kits are worth it. They make it much more convenient, safer, and just make it, um, you, you're more inclined to check more often with a simple kit um, and one of the drop trays that, uh, that are available from producers. Uh, there's additional instructions here as well. Um, I won't go through those because that's what I'll be, be showing you right now. So with that, we'll, we'll go to an example. So I'll run through three examples here, two with canola and, and one with barley. So on the tool, um, you go to the drop down menu here. Uh, all the different crops are in there. So we choose canola. There's imperial and metric um, buttons here. So that's really what that changes is your, your cut width, your discharge width from imperial to metric, and then your outputs. Um, how your losses and your value of your losses are showing. So I'm gonna stick with Imperial because that's what um, most um, producers use now. Um, then there's the three methods and these are the three we'll go through. Two with canola will go on the weight and the volume and then the barley will go in the end with the, the count method. So we'll start with the weight method. Probably the most accurate of all the, the methods. If you don't get that sample quite clean, it's not as big a deal with the weight method because um, chaff doesn't weigh much. So if you've got a bit of chaff in the sample and you're weighing it, um, it doesn't tend to be an issue. Um, so, but the, with a weight method, you need a scale that can measure fairly accurately a small amount. You'll see the, we're looking at a, a few grams, usually under 30 grams um, collection. So uh, you need a, a small battery operated scale. Um, these can be found online fairly cheap on something like Amazon or um, you know, even sporting goods stores like uh, Cabela's will sell you a, a reloading scale with batteries for 60 to $100 in that range. So um, not hard to come by. So here with, with that, we'll start the example. So in the weight method, um, first of all, we had our cut width. We'll go 35 feet for a header. So that's either your, your header or your swath width. Um, your discharge width, that's what's coming out of the back of the combine. So. Typically, that's your, your sieve width. Um, your rotor or your walker discharge will be discharging that same width. Um, so when one of the key things to point out here is you really want to drop that straw um, and that uh, chaff material to do a proper calibration uh, on here. So that'll be your discharge width. So we're going to say 70 inches. On some machines, um, especially the older ones, that might not be possible. Some of the chaff spitters weren't movable. Um, weighed a lot and you know needed hoses disconnected and bolts taken out so if you're unable to um, drop the straw into a row you can still collect uh, um, samples your discharge width will then be whatever your spread width is of the, the chaff and the straw so it, it's not quite as accurate um, and you need to do multiple samples across that spread width to make sure you're you're getting the proper measurement as chaff and grain will discharge at different um, areas due to its different densities. So if, if required, um, it can be done. But again, the best is to drop the straw. So here we've got our 70 inch sieve um, collecting area. So that's the size of your collecting pan. So say we've got a pan that's four feet long by a foot wide, that'd be four square feet. Um, estimated yield. I'm going to put in 52 bushels per acre because that's our goal for 2025 um, average Ola council dollars per bushel um, last I saw for the fall right now they're looking at 1250 so we'll, we'll put that as an example 
And this really just comes into the economic losses on the side. So now this is the important part. This is what you've collected in that, that sample. Um, so you've collected the what's come out of the back of the combine in the tray, you've cleaned the sample, and you've put it on your weight scale and weighed it, and say we've got 25 grams um, in that sample. So then output here, it shows us we're losing 100 pounds per acre, which is two bushels per acre loss, and it's um, 3.8% losses, and the value of that loss is $25 an acre. So we can see with this when we talk about um, being under 2% losses, you know, the losses are definitely higher than we'd like to see, and we need to make some changes, um, come back and see if we've dropped that, that seed loss up.